Welcome, everybody. Time to welcome Mark Godley, our host for Data Dump Radio today, right here on SLMA Radio. It's the one show where you can hear top B2B data vendors and buyers discuss the reality of today's data landscape. In the show, Mark will help you navigate your buying decisions and well, help you enjoy a laugh or two along the way, hopefully. Data Dump is, of course, sponsored by Lead Genius. So let's start dumping some data on you right now. Welcome, Mark. Okay, thank you, Paul. Paul is our announcer today for the Data Dump Show. This is Mark Godley, our host, and I am thrilled to have Maria Graniella with us today, someone I've known for a number of years, a serial entrepreneur who runs a company called Orb Intelligence. Hey, Maria. Hi, Mark. Hi. Thank you for inviting. So happy to have you with us today. And one of the reasons I'm excited to have you with us is, as I said in the intro, you are a serial entrepreneur. Unlike most of us who um, don't have enough self-confidence to start our own businesses, you have done that on many occasions. You have seen a market need. You have applied your years of academic training, including a PhD, uh, to solve a problem. You ask people to pay money for it. And I think you've done that largely without raising a lot of outside capital. Do I have that right? Yes, yes, that's correct. So, so tell us a little bit about, you know, since you have founded multiple data ventures, have there been themes that are common to the companies uh, you've been founding? Yeah, we can say so. Ten years ago, I founded a company called Twitter Times, and it was about news. So we built a service for users to be, uh, which provides personalized newspaper. And we collected news from Twitter, from Twitter API. And yeah, so I have always been working with collecting information and extracting information from social media, from web and building all kinds of product based on this. So Twitter Times was this kind of um, product where we collected data from Twitter and extracted news, and then we ranked news by popularity for particular user by importance. And uh, after that, uh, the company, Twitter Times startup, was acquired by Yandex, uh, which is a Russian web search engine. And they competed with Google in Russian-speaking countries and also in some European countries. So, yeah, in Yandex, I continued building web search engine, collecting data from web pages, all kinds of information extraction and natural language processing techniques were applied. So the common, one of the common themes I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, is it seems that you have some expertise around crawling, aggregating information in the public record, probably in semi-structured or unstructured format, gleaning the useful information from that in creating mm-hmm. a structured database. Is that true? Yes, exactly. That's very well said. So the technology is exactly that. Uh, so uh, we had a lot of background, me and my co-founder and the team of engineers I'm currently working with, they all my previous colleagues from my previous startup. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so we did, we build systems for collecting data, extracting useful information and structuring data from unstructured sources. And mostly working with text, but not necessarily text in general, just unstructured data. Yeah, so, but just um, five years ago, we noticed that Salesforce is growing and Salesforce is becoming a platform and we noticed a lot of applications are being built for CRM, all kinds of predictive analytics and later account-based marketing. And uh, we realized that they all need data and this is probably what we can build. So is that Orb Intelligence? Is that the current venture? Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is my company, Orb Intelligence. Um, I have been working on it for five years now. In November, it's going to be five years. <laughs> Am I correct that you raised little to no money uh, to get it off the ground? Yes, very little money. Uh, friends and uh, mostly friends and family, uh, round of two two hundred k 
in the beginning, and since then we both stepped. Gosh, we were, that's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure it hasn't felt glorious along the way. Um, you know, of course, the other option is you raise a bunch of money from people that don't really understand your business, and then you're beholden to them. So I think the fact that you've been able to make the business self-sufficient, although it probably has not felt great along the way, gives you incredible mm -hmm. autonomy. Yes, um, I think it really depends on the person. I think you need to choose a way for as a founder. You just need to choose a way which you feel makes sense. Yeah. And uh, we, me and my co-founder, we always felt like we want to go step by step, and we yes. want to fo focus on building the product because the early version when we signed customers is very, very different from what we have now. I mean, we didn't pivot, but it's really improved. And uh, we built a lot of uh, processes around it to guarantee the quality of the data, improve the frequency of how we update it and things like this. And we wanted to have our own pace in this. Uh, it is very important. It's, uh, in my opinion, it is hard. Uh, it's just more difficult when you have uh, outside investors and deadlines on when you need to raise a second round and report on your growth. So we decided to grow organically uh, on our own revenue, and uh, that just felt more predictable for us. That's awesome. So let's get into it a little bit with Orb Intelligence. So it sounds like you're providing data to sales and marketing teams. You mentioned Salesforce and Serum. Tell us specifically what Orb Intelligence does. So Orb Intelligence is a thermographic provider. We compete mainly with Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet? I've never heard of them. Just <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. Yes, They're the ones that have been around for like 200 years, right? You know what the joke is, though? Yeah, They've been around for 200 okay. years, but they act, they act much older than that. <laughs> Yeah, it's an old school um, business and the way how this company collects the data and also sells the data, how it provides yeah. it to their customer is, uh, in my opinion, a bit old school because the uh, world changed and now a lot of buying and selling happens on the web and through yeah. a lot of software is used to connect the buyer and the seller and the data provider should also be aware of that and be kind of integrated and provide flexible APIs to be kind of integrated into all the systems. It's not just a list of contacts anymore what we have to provide. So five years ago you get a sense that CRM is turning into a platform that there's going to be data needs. Did you get specific uh, enough at the time to say, and there's a dominant player that is antiquated. We mm -hmm. can come in with modern methods, provide a better product at less money. What, I mean, in other words, being the foil to D and V, was that were you aware of that at the founding of the company, or did that just evolve over time? So I had a friend uh, who was a, who was a founder uh, at a startup called Self Predict. You probably heard of them out of it. They I was related. talking to your own the other day. Is that your own? Was was that uh, your own, the founder, or someone else? Ah, yes, your own and Kira, Kira Radinsky, yeah. his co-founders. I know them both yeah. very well. They're, they're my friends. <laughs> and Kira actually explained me, like, look, we need thermographic, and we tried to use Tan and Bradstreet, and it's expensive. Uh, not a good quality, also just hard to use in terms of they don't provide the API that they needed. They don't have uh, web domains assigned to companies. It was, uh, we felt like um, MVP was relatively easy to build and she said, okay, if you build something, we will buy from you. So and they got you in was, business, yeah. Yeah, they were the, the first customer and also they were smart enough and cool enough to understand that uh, we would certainly go and try to sell the same thing to their co competitors and they were fine with this because it's really yeah. separate what we do and what, what is their business to build a product, this predictive analytics lead scoring uh, product. And uh, yeah, th this science sells predict and then we talked just reached out to other similar vendors like Lattice Engines was one of our first customers. And also we got this kind of approval that it's useful. Yeah. And after that we realized that we can bootstrap. 
this business. That's amazing. Now, I want to ask you one more funding question, then then we'll probably take a break and, and we'll get more into or But, you know, sales predict is interesting that you bring up Kira and your own because they were in the predictive space right as it was starting to ramp. And I think they were like the second sale. The first was flip top to LinkedIn. And then they sold that company pretty early. I think to eBay, uh, act, or yes, if I'm yes. remembering correctly. Please, please. So, yes. mm-hmm. so like th- they're an example of selling way early in the company life cycle, but you've chosen to, to remain independent. I got to believe that you've been approached about the acquisition of the company, but what is your outlook as to your future and whether or not you're going to take funding or whether or not you're open to a buyout or are you just you're doing so well, you'd rather just keep your head down and blind yourself. Yeah, of course, we, we were approached several times uh, by uh, our customers who already yeah. know us very well. And especially because we are, we have a lot of OEM relationships with our customers. Yes. It, it really makes sense for some of them to have to have the whole team internally and the product. Yeah. And but uh, yeah, but so far the business is growing and we are all enjoying it and it's interesting because especially last year we built very interesting partnerships with advertising platforms. I will tell about it later after the break. So I just want to see where we can get <laughs> so far. <laughs> Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Well, let's take that break because we got a lot more to talk about. So let's let's pay some bills of our own here with a commercial break, and we'll mm-hmm. be back in a minute and continue the conversation about Maria and Orb Intelligence. We'll be back in a minute. And let's try and keep it to no more than a minute because we just want to say, well, we really want to ask you a question. How well do you know your total addressable market? Really? What are the most profitable micro-segments of your audience? Who are all the decision-makers at your ideal locations? If you don't know, then you might want to listen some more here, because there's a company that can tell you, Lead Genius. Lead Genius helps business-to-business enterprise companies, such as Google, eBay, and Square, power their go-to-market strategies, and they can do the same for you. Lead Genius has the highest quality contact and account data available anywhere. How? Well, Lead Genius verifies every single data point with a unique combination of real human researchers and machine learning. Quality is assured and accuracy is 100%, guaranteed. See for yourself why enterprise marketing and sales leaders trust Lead Genius. Visit leadgenius.com to learn more about your total addressable market today. It's simple. Just click on leadgenius.com. Just like it sounds, leadgenius.com. All right, with that, let's get back to our show. And welcome back to the second half of the Data Dump with Maria Grignella, founder, co-founder of Orb Intelligence. Maria, right before the break, you were saying you're doing some interesting things with, were you saying ad tech companies? Tell me more about what, yes. what you were working on last year. Yes, and I think it's very really exciting uh, kind of new market. So. Uh, recently, um, there is this trend called account-based marketing. You, of course, know what it is. Uh, Litrinius is also participating in this um, a new trend. And uh, the whole point is to connect CRM management and customer management with advertising. So to connect online marketing campaigns with uh, offline campaigns for B2B. So advertising has always... Uh, for a long, like, I don't know, for 15 years probably, it was all about targeting consumers and kind of for B2C companies. But recently, new technologies appeared that allow to target businesses. And it is when you target customers uh, who are companies, so you target uh, employees of this, uh, your potential accounts. It's very important to, to understand the whole um, funnel and to link all the data from CRM uh, to marketing systems and to also to advertising companies. So what we did uh, with Orb Intelligence last year, because we built an additional data set, which is IP addresses to companies mapping. And this allowed us to onboard our data to LiveRamp. So LiveRamp is a part of Axiom. And it basically allows advertisers to build audiences and to target 
to target the different audiences they want to buy media for. So, so, so is the database IP addresses matched to URL? Is that is that the database? It's an additional data set additional to our core firmographic data set, which is a range of IP addresses mapped to ORP number, to a company profile in our firmographic database. So basically for uh, about uh, 4 million companies now from our database, we also know their IP addresses. Interesting. So I can take my advertising dollars, I can move them online, and I can do retargeting or any kind of targeted advertisements, matched IP addresses, which which is the particular companies. What you're saying is the IP address is the key, is the distinguishing data point that allows you to track a company in its electronic form. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, that's true. So, um, but this all happens uh, behind the scenes because our data is now onboarded on, into LiveRAM and you don't need to, to think about all these details about how all this data linkage is uh, implemented. Yeah. So basically, LiveRAM connected our firmographics with cookies through IP addresses. So now, You mentioned cookies. Uh, Are you doing anything with device IDs? I'm just curious. Uh, not yet, no. All right, we should talk offline. I think, I think that's yeah. a, a future op <laughs> op option for you. <laughs> yeah, we sell the data, our data there. Now it's a CPM yes. uh, model, not yeah. price per record or price per API call. It's now CPM, and yeah. we have a revenue share with LiveRamp. It's great to see you. Um, what, what I like about what you're, what you're saying, Maria, so many times when I talk to entrepreneurs, they're about building kind of shiny objects and cool mousetraps. What I'm hearing about the examples you're giving me is you have a very flexible skill set in your staff, in your company. And what you've done is you've asked businesses, where are you having problems? Where, where are you seeing needs in the marketplace? And so you're designing things that have immediate relevance to customers. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why you've been able to get so much revenue traction out of the gate because you're not, you're not sitting in an ivory tower saying, well, if I build this cool mousetrap, someone will come. You're actually talking to the marketplace saying, you know, where do you have a need? If I can solve that, will you pay me money for it, right? Yeah, exactly. This is very well said. So when we, while bootstrapping uh, a company, we don't have many resources to uh, build a lot of things ahead. And that makes us really um, careful about next steps. So uh, and this, when we started, uh, we sold uh, only as an OEM. So we sold the full database with a very, very simple business model to other vendors that uh, build products using uh, predictive analytics, lead scoring, and things like this. But yeah. later, uh, we added several customers who are enterprises. So we started selling to enterprises who internally built complicated uh, systems for marketing and uh, sales operations and analytics. Okay. And they required more uh, more support or kind of a little bit more professional services to work with them. And so it, you, you can do this kind of thing only later. And later on the fourth and fifth year, we built this kind of integrations like LiveRamp and also we integrated with OpenPrice and currently building an integration with a company called Matchbook. Mm -hmm. So... So have you heard of, of Matchbook and Open Price? Interesting. So in the last couple of minutes, uh, Maria, I want to get your perspective on the future. Two-part question. One, where do you see Orb Intelligence in three to five years? And two, what predictions do you have about the data space in three to five years? Mm -hmm. uh, about Orb Intelligence, I think we will be... Um, growing and I hope we will be growing and um, just doing the same job that we do right now, helping our customers growing organically. I, at the moment, I, I'm not sure I want to raise money, but this can change. We are hiring engineers and salespeople and um, I, I hope these new partnerships will bring interesting new opportunities and more revenue, we will see. And about the data space, 
I think there will be much more consolidation, especially uh, with the fact that Dun and Bradstreet is now in quite um, unclear position after they were bought out yeah. uh, from uh, being, they're not public anymore. And I think there, there should be some restructuring in the space and uh, a lot of acquisitions and mergers and in general, I think there is an opportunity to um, uh, move down and breast it uh, and to provide with, with this new new um, new data vendors can now especially have an opportunity to get a little bit more market from Bradstreet. Yeah. No, I think with DNB uh, going private, that was announced in the last couple of months. I think, you know, someone's going to break that behemoth up. And I think you're right. I mean, just their mm-hmm. sales and marketing business, I think it's a $600 million business. Um, at least that's what they report to the street. So the market is, is desperate for new players. And I think you were very wise to see an opportunity and jump into it. I'll make a prediction and we'll see um, that is along the lines of what you just talked about. I think as well, there's going to be continued consolidation. And I think Orb Intelligence is going to be bought in the next three to five years. And I know you want to remain independent, but I think your underlying IP is so valuable and your team is so impressive someone is going to buy you. And although you're going to, you know, even if you say you're not for sale, I think everything has its price. And um, yeah, we'll see, we'll get, you know, if you have been sold, it means, and I'll be curious as to what you do next, because I think it's going to be nothing but continued success uh, for you and the rest of your team in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting to see. <laughs> well, it's a good prediction. Yeah. So if there's anyone listening to this, to this podcast that wants to buy you for an enormous, enormous premium, <laughs> how can they get in touch with you? Is there an email or a website or LinkedIn profile? How can people um, get additional questions answered? Yeah, sure. So um, our uh, website is orb-intelligence.com, and you can find me on LinkedIn. My, my name is Maria Grineva. I am on LinkedIn as CEO and co-founder of Orb Intelligence or by my email, maria at orb-intelligence.com. Okay, there's a dash in there, everybody, not an underscore, a dash in the middle, hyphen, if you will. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Maria, this has been fascinating. Uh, congratulations on the enormous success you've had until now. And all of us will be watching and applauding from the sidelines because the future is very bright for you and Orb Intelligence. Thank you so much for inviting. Thanks, Maria. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Paul, I'm going to send it back to you. You've been listening to another episode of Data Dump Radio right here on the SLMA radio channel. Also part of the ever-growing Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you. 